thinking about the different ways that we can get in spirit and spend time with God. Some things that I do is like listen to music, obviously, um, sit outside in nature, spend time with my dogs, I uh, like to talk to God about um, different memories of when I was a kid to remind me of things or sometimes things will just pop up and I'll remember a moment when I was a child or it could be a moment I spent with a sibling or some just a reminder of something where I um, had a special moment with one of my parents you know and uh, one thing I'm working on right now is a book for my dad. I'm writing down some of my favorite, fondest memories of him as a child and things that we did together or just things that I learned about, different lessons that I learned about in watching him and talking with him, spending time with him. And yeah, I share like different things in this book that's on my heart that I hope encourages him and lets him know how, much, how loved he is and just how much he means to me. Other ways that I spend time with God is like watching um, old movies or TV shows that reminded me of things from my childhood that I either watched back then or someone like a character or something in a movie or, or a TV show or something that reminds me of who I was at a certain age and like I reminisce that way, but I also learn new lessons, like God will teach me new lessons about my heart and just the different things that I've learned in my walk and my journey with God in this life and just the different things I've learned in the different stages of my life. So I like to like get in spirit and really talk to Jesus about the different um, ages of Jackie, you know, the different time in my life the different ages in my life, you know, like God's expressed to me that he loves all of us, right? And he's expressed to me like this is something that just was intimate and beautiful that he expressed to me to encourage me one day. Um, he was telling me that he liked all versions of me. Um, and what I mean by that is like he, like he was telling me like, you know, when I was inside my mother's womb and then when I was born, you know, baby Jackie, and then toddler Jackie, and little child Jackie, and <laughs> um, he would just remind me of different things about me at that time, whether it's like things that I said or did that he thought was cute, like God does talk about this, you guys, and then he'll talk to me about different things, like just different, different lessons I've learned about my heart over the years and why I used to say certain things or act a certain way when I was a child and just my own quirkiness, you know, and uniqueness that we all have, right? Because we're all special to God in our own way. We're all unique. So, like, um, he was just talking to me about this and then just the different things, the hard trials and stuff that I had to go through as a child and then my teenage years you know, I'm in my 20s and 30s, and now my 40s, which I finally, finally, finally have felt so secure and happy with who I am, whereas, like, even 10 years ago, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I, I love who I am now. And it took me finding God and finding my identity in Jesus and really just coming undone before him to really even get to know who I am because God is always constantly teaching me about who I am. So like, with that being said, um, aging, right? Like the world, what I've learned, what I personally have witnessed in this world as a woman, okay, as a female, is that the world tells females that when they're 40, <laughs> that life pretty much ends for them, and <laughs> which is insane, I know, but, like, that's just the flesh speaking, you know, because people, most people look on the outside of people, they don't look on the inside, they don't look at the heart, but I still feel like I'm, like, six years old sometimes, or 15 years old. 
and I sincerely really do forget my age, but um, my point in sharing this is like, age is just a number to me, and I'm very confident in who I am now because I have Jesus, and I'm not saying that I'm perfect and I have it all together, I just mean I'm comfortable in my skin and who I am as a woman, you know, who I am as a wife, who I am as a mother, and who I am as a human being. And I'm always learning about God's heart. He's always teaching me about who I am. Um, but I'm just sharing this because maybe it'll encourage you that if you're, like, struggling. Because you're getting older. That, like, God wants you encouraged to know that it's just a number. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful gift to get older. Anyways, I had to attend to my dogs. Um, so I was just talking about, like, if you are discouraged because you're getting older, I want to encourage you to know that who cares what the world says about age. Beauty is within, and you can find your identity in Jesus Christ. He can really fill you up with the self-esteem that you've never had before, and he'll just open your mind and heart to knowing more knowledge about who you really are. And that's where a person really finds their true identity. And anyways, I just wanted to encourage you to know that it doesn't matter how old you are. You know, that you're still beautiful. Um, all of your flaws, or what the world calls flaws, it makes you unique. You know what I'm saying? Like if you have scars or whatever, it makes you unique. And there's only one you. So yeah, these are just some of the things that I like to think about and talk about with Jesus, and it's just, it's strange to me, you guys, like, I'll jump off this topic in a moment, but how the women in Hollywood, like the older women, and I'll just name a couple, like Cher and Dolly Parton, you know, and other people who get, like, facelifts, and I don't know, just all of that stuff, um, that it's unnatural for them to be aging in that way because they're not allowing themselves to age and it's just unnatural it doesn't look right like I know that if I get to be an old grandmother that I would like to embrace who I am how God made me age in that physical manner in that way because it's natural and it's beautiful but to see these older women who are grandmothers you know and even some who aren't right like Dolly's not I don't think I don't think she's a grandmother um but anyways um and they don't look like grandmothers, they, they look like plastic Barbie dolls, it's so unnatural and it's, it's not beautiful, it's not. So I just wanted to, yeah, encourage you to embrace your true beauty and true identity, which is found in Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I just talk about this a lot with God, like, we talk about this a lot. Um, I just, I want people to find their confidence in God because that's where the confidence is that's where the foundation is that's where God can build you up and mold you and shape you and really teach you who you are and how he sees you you know what I mean and how um, just allow God to be the one to mold you and allow him to be the potter and he can like mold you every day and yeah into a beautiful pure heart so those are just some of the things, some of the ways that I like to get into the spirit and just some of the things that I wanted to share with you guys that I have some conversation I've been having, conversations that I've been having with Jesus lately. I really just like to get my mind um, on pure thoughts and because there's so much violence and just so much evil in this world that it some days it can be really discouraging and hard to smile. I mean, and it's normal to feel that way. It's normal to feel like a form of depression, if you will, because, or sorrow, um, grievance because of all of the violence and stuff in the world. So, like, that's normal if you're feeling those things. If you're feeling like this world's making you sad, well, yeah, it's, I mean, that's normal. Um, and my heart goes out to you. My heart goes out to everyone who feels sad and, you know, just at all, all the evil that's going on in the world. But I like to just 
take a break from reading the news and just the horrific things that are happening. Um, even in my own neighborhood, there's cops here all the time. There's gunshots and it's hard to feel safe in a world, you know, like I trust Jesus and he guides me and leads me and he protects me, but I just mean like in my family, but I just, I mean in general, just speaking in general, like it's hard to feel safe in a world, right? With all this stuff increasing, violence and evil and wickedness and sin increasing, it's just going to get worse. So as depressing and horrific as that sounds and that we are living in the last days, I mean, there's still things that God can help you think upon and really be thankful for to really endure each day and to see the good in each day and to see the gift that God gives us in each day. So I like to think about those things. I like to think about all the beautiful miracles and trials that Jesus has brought me through, you guys. Like, seriously, it's a miracle that I'm sitting here talking to you. I should have been dead, like many times over honestly I've had such a hard life and just did things that it's just shocking that I'm still here like I was an alcoholic at one time I did drugs I was just very careless you know in my 20s a lot in my 20s teens in my 20s so it really is a miracle that I'm sitting here and I like to sit with God and these are just some examples, more examples of how I like to get in spirit with God, and I like to just thank Him about how far He's brought me and just where I'm at, you know, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's so weird because it's kind of, it's like scary and exciting at the same time to see where we're gonna walk, like what, what my journey has in store for me next, you know, like I'm just living day by day and some days are so much harder you guys um I'm not gonna lie I'm not happy all the time I have a lot of sorrow I carry sorrow with me as every believer does um for various reasons but I mean like you know for lost souls and just for the aching in God's heart and you know for brethren and family and things like that but I just mean like you can find joy you can find joy in simple things you know if you um, take time to really sit with God and think about these things that he's done in your life and I was thinking about this earlier earlier too and it's it's such a simple thought but it's so deep and so beautiful that our hearts are beating right now because of the power of God because of the hand of God and God knows how many heartbeats we're going to have in this life. Like, do you guys ever think about that? Like, people should really respect and fear God and honor God. I mean, just this thought in itself, I was thinking if, if I didn't know God, this thought in itself would help me, like, gain a whole new perspective and fear of God to know that He can make my heartbeat stop at any moment. He can take my life at any moment, and He knows the specific time and place that I will be and how many heartbeats I've had in this entire life when he takes me. It won't be a moment too soon and it won't be a moment too late. It'll be in God's perfect timing. And just to know that God can take my life at any moment if he chose to, if he wanted to, for whatever reasons he had, that he could do it. He has that power and he has the power to cast any soul and body into hell that in itself should should really motivate people to really seek him and not just for the factor of you know just because of fear but because of honor but some other thoughts i had were like if if people would just take the time to really get to know jesus and to spend time getting to know their creator and building that relationship and bond then, I mean, obviously, like, your life would have more meaning to you. It would make more sense, and people would naturally begin to fall in love with God the more they spent time with Him and stuff. And I'm not saying, you guys, that there aren't moments when it's really hard, um, because, because trials do come, and 
with trials come pain and suffering. So I'm not saying it's always, always fun and you're always going to be happy and joyful. But with that being said, even in the darkest of dark moments, I know with all my heart that my God is going to see me through. He's going to get me through. And he always has. And even in my darkest and weakest moments, when my own faith, when I'm hanging on because I'm, I'm having anxiety or you know, insomnia or whatever the issue is in the moment, whether it's a spiritual attack or whatever's going on, and if these thoughts flood my mind of you no know, hopelessness, I there's always that anchor there. Even if I'm saying I feel hopeless or even if I feel hopeless in that moment, there's always that anchor there that I know that God's going to grab me and pull me out. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Um, it's just the knowing that I have, the confidence in God. Not, not the confidence in me, but the confidence in God knowing that, you know, I'm going to cry out to Him with all my heart, even in the worst case scenario where my heart's ripped out and broken over whatever it could be. Um, it's like I've always found myself just waiting on Him in those moments, even if I don't hear Him or feel Him. He always, always shows up right on time perfectly and fills me with His love, His joy, His peace and strength all over again and he ain't letting go of my hand you know like I know this about my God I'm definitely a witness that even in the moments when it feels hopeless God will show up in his perfect timing and even if it's not in our timing in that moment he always shows up and he's using it for something he's using his silence to be a lesson in itself and his silence is also speaking to us, like, in those moments. But, yeah, I could just talk about this for hours. I just like talking about um, different things. I want to give people hope. I want to be a light in this world to give people hope. I want to give you guys hope to know that you can cry out to Jesus. No matter what you're going through, no matter how far you've fallen, how, if you're in sin and you want to break free from that sin, or if you need counsel... You can cry out to God and just keep pressing in, keep like trusting in Him and waiting and waiting and waiting. And He will show up. He will tell you what you need to hear. If He sees that your heart's reacting in a way to where you're being serious and you really, really are striving to endure and you really want His counsel and answers from Him and like if you just cry out to God and you feel like there's no hope for you, you feel like you're the worst sinner in the world, God wants you to know even in that moment, in that hour, you can cry out to Him and He will hear you and He will answer you and He draws near to the broken hearted. There's always hope in Jesus. That's what I've learned is there's always hope in Jesus. And no matter how far a person is falling, Jesus can still save them if they cry out to him. That's what I've learned. But a heart has to be willing to turn from their wickedness and really um, take the correction of God, you know. And to admit that they don't have it all together. But I just wanted to give you guys this hope. Yeah, I was just sitting outside and just thankful for this moment even to be able to like and watch the sun go down you know it's been so hot the past few days that I'm just so thankful that I'm able to sit out here now be without having like some heat stroke because I've been having health issues with that lately but I just wanted to use this time wisely and I was really like asking Jesus how can I give people hope I just want to give people hope in this hour you know and I just felt like sharing my heart. So I'm just going to keep doing this however God leads. I just want to be like so transparent with you guys. And I just want to be, I want to give people hope. Cry out to God. He cares for you. He loves you. Draw near to him with all your heart and he will hear you. God bless.
Thank <laughs> you.